With the data table widget you can structure your data in columns and rows and we want to look specifically at how we can also edit our data next to displaying our data. If you are new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's get started by building our data table. Therefore we go to our build method and here inside we create a new method build data table. Inside of this method we want to create then a data table widget and you also need to supply here the columns. And the columns are always displayed here at the top, so these are our headers and therefore we define here the first name, last name and age within a new list. So I create here a columns list with the first name, last name and age. And now we simply want to build these columns, therefore we simply go over all of these strings which we have defined and for each of them we want to create a data column and inside of it you create a label where you pass then the string value inside of a text widget. With this we make sure that we already display here the header information of our table and we also want to display then all of our rows. So here we have a row, then we have another user data row and so on. And therefore you have here within your data table a rows property and we want to display then all of our users as the data. Therefore I have created here a user class with the first name and the last name and also the age. And secondly I also have created here a list of all of our users where I've specified then the data for them. And now we simply want to display all of these users in our data table. Therefore let's go back to our data table and here we want to create this getRows method. And now we want to map over all of our users and we want to build then for each of these users the cells. And this means we have here a row and each of these row has then one cell, a second cell and the third cell and this is what we need to fill with data. So the first cell contains our first name and the second cell contains our last name. And this is also what we then put here inside. First of all we put the first name inside and then also all the other fields of our user. And secondly we create then our data row where we put then all of these cells inside. So we put here them inside and then we want to map over them. And therefore I have created here a specific method so that we are not only getting here the value, we also get the index of our cell. And therefore I have created this model builder method. And if you also want to use it, then you can simply check out the source code with the first link in the description and with the second link you can get access to my Flutter courses where I teach you how you can become a better and more efficient developer. Alright, now let's go back to our get rows method and here we map over all of our cells and now we want to build each individual cell. And therefore I simply put here then this data, our cell data inside and we also need to convert our cell data then to a string because here this one has a string, this is also of type string, however this one is of type integer and therefore we need to convert it. And with this we already display here our user data which we have defined here within our user data list. Our data table which we define here is by default not scrollable so if you try to scroll here then nothing will happen. And to make it scrollable you simply need to wrap here around another widget and I create here a specific widget which is a scrollable widget and here inside we put then our child inside and here around we wrap then a single child scroll view and we also need to specify the scroll direction so I set it to vertical. And secondly I also create here another single child scroll view and this time I specify the scroll direction for horizontal. And with this we can scroll now vertically in our list which we have specified here with the first single child scroll view because we have set it to vertical and with the second one we have set it to horizontal so if you have your more columns to the right then we also can scroll horizontally to the right side. Next we also can place here an edit icon in our cell and therefore we can then edit our first name and our last name. And if we click then on one of these fields then we can here change the name of this field. 
To achieve this, we simply go to our get rows method where we display then all of our rows. And here inside we have then each individual cell which we built. And next to our cell, we want to display then this show added icon. And therefore you can set it here to true. And now he will simply display for every cell here this added icon. Sometimes you only want to modify specific cells and this is also what you can specify. So let's remove it again. And instead we want to create here a condition which says if the index is zero or if the index is one, which means if it is here the first column or the second column. And if this is the case, then we want to display here our edit icon. And therefore we simply put here this flag here inside. And now if I hot reload, you see we have here this for the first two columns, however, not for the third column. Next, we want to click here on one of these cells and then we want to edit this data. And therefore you go simply to your data cell and here you have an on tap handler. And every time if you then tap on one of these cells like this, then we want to edit our cell. And therefore I simply look here for the index. So if we are here within the first column, so if it, the index is zero, then we want to edit our first name. And therefore I also put here then this user object inside, which is then representing this user, which we have clicked on. And now we create this edit first name method where our edited user goes inside. And now if we click on one of these data fields, then we want to show a dialogue with a done button and a text field. And here every time should go then the initial name inside and later we can then modify it and click on done to also manipulate our field value. To achieve this, I create here a new method show text dialog and here we want to put then our title inside, which is then later displayed here at the top of our dialog. And secondly, we also want to place here our value inside, which is in this case the first name. And therefore I simply put here to the value, the added user first name inside. And now we want to create then this show text dialog method based on these both values, the title and the value. And therefore I simply create here a new method show text dialog and we get here then the title and value. And here we simply call then the show dialog method from the Flutter SDK to show our dialog. And within the builder we want to create then our own text dialog widget. And inside of it, we simply pass then the title and the value. And we also create then in our text dialog widget, the title and value. And lastly, we simply need to create the UI of our dialog. So we want to create here this title, then our content, which is our text field, and also some actions, in this case, a button. And therefore we get started by creating a text editing controller so that we can put here already the initial value of our text field inside. And this means we get here then the value on which we have clicked and we put it inside of our text editing controller. And now we simply want to create our dialogue. Therefore we create an alert dialogue with the title which we have specified over this title. And secondly, we want to display then our text field and therefore I put here the controller inside which is then displaying our value. And with this, we already display here our title and also our text field with our value on which we have clicked. Then we also can decorate our text field a bit so we make it rounded and we also want to include the actions. And therefore we simply create here an elevated button with the text done. And every time if we click on this button, then we want to hide our dialogue again. And therefore we call here this navigator pop. And lastly, we also can place then the current text of our text field, which we access then over our controller. And this text value, which we put here inside, we can access then later on the other page. So we get here then this value back. And now we simply can take the new value which we have typed and simply put it then to our edit user. And therefore I simply map over all of our users which I have stored within the user list. And then we simply want to check if the user which we are currently looking at is the edited user. So we simply compare them. And if it is the edited user, then we want to put the new first name inside. And therefore I simply created here a copy method in our user class. And then we can simply put here the new first name inside. And this will make then a copy of our current user and only modifies here then the first name data. And therefore I have also created here this copy method, which basically modifies then only the data which we put here inside. Within your user model class, you also need to override the equals and hash code methods so that we also can compare our user. And this is especially needed if we compare here our user with the other edited user. 
So in total, we change our user object every time if it is the edited user. However, if it is not the edited user, then we simply want to have it unmodified. And now we can try it out. So I click here somewhere on the first name column. So let's go here and then I simply can modify it. And then I click on done. And then you see that we have here the new data within our first name cell. Let's also look at how we can modify then our last name. And this works pretty similar. So we simply go to this on tap of our data cell. And every time if we click here on our data cell, then we want to check if the index on which we have clicked is one which means that we are within our last name column. And if this is the case, then we want to create here an added last name method. And we also put the user again inside. Now let's create this added last name user method. And here inside we create then again this show text dialog like before. And this time we only need to place then another title inside. So we change this time the last name and we also put here another value inside. So this time we access here over our user object, the last name instead of the first name. And with this, we already display here our dialog with the last name title and also with the last name which we have clicked on. And now if we click here on this done button, we get then again the last name back and we also want to modify then our user data again. Therefore, I simply map here over our users data like before. And here we check if it is then the edited user. And if it is the edited user, then we simply want to change here the last name of our edited user. Otherwise, if it is not the edited user, then we simply let this data unmodified. And now we also can try this out. So I click here on this winter, for example, and then I change this name a bit and click on done. And you see that we have here the new edited data inside. As a small bonus, you also can change here this column because here it is displayed every time to the left side. And you also can display these numbers on the right side. And how you do this is by simply going to your get columns method. And here we determine first of all that we are here within the second column. And if this is the case, then we want to align the second column to the right side. And therefore you have here this property numeric. And here I simply put then this is h inside, which means that if we are here within this column, then this column is numeric. And now if I hot reload, you see that this data is then aligned to the right side. And this is normally done for numeric data. So if you have numbers and so on. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye.